Hello everyone and welcome to Max Light series of webinars. I'm Bill Fenimore, Director of Project Sales and Training. Coming to you from another relatively warm day here in New Jersey based on the time of year. Today we're going to talk about the scotopic photopic ratio, TM30 and total lumens versus delivered lumens. So part one or the first thing we'll talk about is scotopic photopic ratio. And the issue is human perception of a lighted environment is driven by both photopic and scotopic vision. But primarily we've used photopic since the beginning of measuring light. So we've always measured light photopically and that's what our light meters are based on. So we kind of have an environment where now we're starting to try to invoke scotopic or how the eye perceives light into it. And what we see here on our next page are some uh, tools that are used to measure light uh, photopically. So we see a sphere and a light meter. Photopic is known as light or daylight vision and it deals primarily with the cones in the eye. So there's a higher sensitivity in brighter light, a peak sensitivity towards red, and the basis as we said for modern photometry. This is all light metering is based on photopic measurements. Uh, scotopic though is known as a dark or night vision and deals primarily with the rods. So this deals primarily with how the eye perceives light and so there's a higher sensitivity in speed in different spectral ranges. There's a peak sensitivity towards the blue range and higher color temperature lamps 5000 and 7000 Kelvin. Now one of the reasons this came about was we talk about LEDs and prior to that it was induction fluorescent. We were trying to save energy. We were trying to say that we were delivering a similar amount of light to the surface area or the amount of light that the eye needed. And because we couldn't have the total lumens, because many of these were directional, especially LEDs, we started looking at measuring it scotopically also as, as a source. Now the rods, as we say, are active in bright light and do contribute to the perception of brightness. Uh, scotopic contributes to improved acuity but this is not yet well defined. That's why I want to caution you. We see a lot of manufacturers are putting out scotopic lumens and again we got to be careful when, when comparing to the old guard that we used to use with photopic. So higher scotopic sources can provide equivalent brightness with lower energy and that's the basis behind LEDs. So now let's discuss uh, the ratio in a little bit more detail. The combination of scotopic and photopic this is usually complexity, if not trouble, because we're mixing physics with biology. As we said, we've got a standard measure and then we're saying how the eye actually perceives it. So the physical side of things, the radiant power of a light source is simply enough to find and is well behaved. Now the biological side of things is the evoking of visual sensations and it's very hard to define and not at all well behaved. And we talk about this we're talking about as the eye ages, it doesn't perceive light as well as when it's a younger eye. So what age bracket do we want to use if we're using scotopic? We, we know people that have night blindness and don't drive anymore at night because they can't see as they age. So that's kind of uh, one of the, the issues that is there with scotopic. Here we have some pictures and we, we can see on the top right we kind of have a couple different parking lots of these before and after kind of we see kind of an LED and it's, it's a lower amount of light coming out but it's more uniform. On the right we can kind of see an HID where we're seeing a lot of light hitting the ground directly underneath the light source and then dissipating as it goes out. And you know with scotopic we're, we're dealing primarily with how well the eye perceives or, or sees the images. When we talk about our ratios and we know that high pressure sodium has a very low CRI uh, around 22 and so we can see the scotopic photopic ratio for high pressure sodium is only 0 0.40. When we start to move down in, in the light sources and we start to get into LED and fluorescence and we see 6500 Kelvin and this was primarily some of the first LEDs that came out where in this range we see a SP ratio of 2.14. And we see here on, on the right side, we see pictures. We see a 3000 Kelvin at 52 CRI. You can see the picture, it's kind of hard to, to see everything. As we move down in 3000 Kelvin and 82 CRI, we see a little better. Then we go all the way down to 6500 Kelvin. We can see it's a little bit washed out, but the image is a little bit more crisper. So we don't see the colors that we see at the lower CRIs, but we see the image in a much more crisper. And this is how it can affect you. We, we talked about a high pressure sodium. 
and we can see a 250 watt HPS lamp is delivering 2400 photopic lumens. We multiply that by the SP ratio and we see that we get somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 scotopic lumens. When we move to an LED source, we see we've got 140 watt, 5,000 Kelvin product here. It's delivering about a third of the photopic lumens, but the SP ratio is over three times that of the high pressure sodium at 1.96, and we see the scotopic lumens delivered are much greater or, or greater than what was there from the, from the high pressure sodium at a much higher uh, wattage. Now let's move on to TM30. Uh, TM30 is a new quality metric that was recently adopted by the IAS to supplement and eventually replace the old CRI, CIE metric for measuring fidelity of a light source. So it has three main components. One is the RF, which is similar to the metric for the CRI RA standard, and it measures the color rendering based on a comparison to a color palette of 99 colors, where CRI only measured to 9. So again, this is the, the R fidelity index. The RG, or the gamut, it measures the average gamut shift or hue and saturation of a light source, and then a graphical representation of the RG gamut to visually represent which colors are washed out more or more vivid due to the light source. Why is this important? Well, CRI is not going away right now, but the IES is still waiting for feedback to see how they can tweak this a little bit so that it'll work best in all applications. You'll most likely start to see this being used uh, by specifiers and retail shops, especially if they're trying to accent a particular color that they want to show off. They're going to want to use this to demonstrate that that's, that's the, um, the TM30 number that they want to use. And as we said before, CRI can be gamed uh, because it's only nine colors. So an engineer will be able to kind of uh, inflate the numbers without improving the quality of light. And now when we look at the IES method for color rendition, as we said, the, the RF, or the color fidelity index, it's the inaccurate rendition of the colors so that they appear as they would under familiar illuminance. Uh, the RG, or the gamut index, is the average level of saturation relative to familiar illuminance. And then we have our color vector graph, which is a visual description of the hue and saturation changes. TM3015 is uh, it's an improved method. As I say, we're going to see specifiers using that more. They're going to provide feedback to help the IES to kind of tweak it. And uh, you're choosing a better light source. It may be more challenging now, but also more rewarding. And when we, we talk about the CIE, we know the scale runs from, it's supposed to be zero, but no one knows that the zero CRI is black. So we, we go from zero to 100, and the higher the number, the better. We talked about the uh, fidelity, and this, so the TM30RF is similar to the RA. So again, zero to 100, and the higher the better. The problem is when we get to the gamut and the saturation, and when we get to the, uh, the TM30 icon, um, those don't necessarily, the higher the number doesn't mean that you're seeing better, because this is dealing more with the color saturation. And a good example of that is on our next slide here, we can see an original CRI 95, which we would say, hey, great CRI. We see the fidelity at 93 and the gamut at 100, and we kind of see that at where it stands. We kind of desaturate it, though. We lower the CRI, we lower the fidelity, and we even lower the saturation or the gamut, and we can kind of see how it takes place there. And then on the last slide, we actually enhance it with red. So we've uh, raised the saturation, we've kept the uh, fidelity the same and the CRI the same, and you can see it brings out more of the tones that are there. So the browns and then the reds appear a little bit more crisper. And then we can see our, our color vector graphic here kind of is an example of that. The original one, there's not much uh, of, a, of a color vector. And as we get to uh, the red enhanced, we can see that that area is expanded in our graphic. We now look at the IES, uh, the R fidelity versus the CIE from the standard and that's our bottom axis versus the vertical axis, and we can see there's a, a grouping right around the, the 80 the CIE from the different type of light sources that was, was everyone was trying to get into that general range when manufacturing products. All this information, though, is available to you if you go on to the energy.gov website, and you can get all this uh, for yourself if you want to download it or are looking for some more information. Please feel free to do that. 
Now let's move on to uh, part three, delivered lumens versus total lumens. When we talk about total lumens, we're talking about an older light source. So an HID, an incandescent. Um, and what happened is the light is coming out 360 degrees on this type of uh, light source or lamp. And so there was reflectors built into the vessel to help direct the light out of the vessel and onto the work surface area. So an omnidirectional light source requires 78% of the output is being redirected. It's bouncing inside of the vessel. And the majority of the reflections are directed back into the bulb. So we've got a lot of bouncing going on in there of light source. It's not coming out. It's not working its way out of the vessel. Energy is lost and compounded with every reflector. So every time it bounces off one reflected, some of the light is lost there, some of the energy, so you have less light coming to the work surface area. And most light traces require multiple reflections before hitting the work surface area. So by the time it gets there, the total lumens that we have, less than 14% of that is making it to the work surface area. Now when we think of delivered lumens, we think of LEDs, we think of them being directional, and more than 94% of the directional lumens are delivered. Makes sense. Why, why waste your light bouncing it off of something? So 80% of the total lumen output is delivered directly to the work surface area. Now the remaining 20% though are reflected, but they're reflected normally only once. So just a limited amount of, of energy and light loss coming out of that. None of the lumens though are reflected back into the bulb area or to the light source area. And when we look at our last chart here, we can kind of see a representation of total lumens. As we said, light's coming out 360 degrees, it's bouncing all over the place. And that's how light was measured. That's what everybody said, what's your, what's your initial lumens of your, of your lamp was basically how we determined uh, light sources back then or, or, or light values. Now with delivered lumens, we say how much light is actually hitting the surface. What's being delivered to the work area? So you can see, much more efficient with the delivered lumens than it was with the HID or the, or the total lumen side. So instead of lumen output, as we say, that, that, or, or total initial lumens, the best and most relevant measurement for evaluating LED light fixtures and for making accurate comparisons when conventional light fixtures is delivered light. That's the formal term, and when we talk about that and we're measuring delivered light, the formal term is illuminance. So roughly speaking, illuminance is the intensity of light falling on a surface area. If the area is measured in square feet, the unit of illuminance is known as a foot candle. If measured in square meters, the unit of illuminance is known as lux. Now, delivered lumens describe how much useful light a light fixture can deliver to a task area. So we just were talking about that. It can be partially blocked or dispersed within a fixture housing. And it can be lost through filtering, lensing, fixture positioning, or any number of other factors relevant to a specific installation. So a fixture's total lumen output does not account for wasted light. Because LED lighting fixtures are fundamentally directional, the LED fixture typically wastes much less light, so we're able to have lower wattage and deliver the, the lumens to the work area more efficiently. When we talk about our traditional fixtures, and again we're back to, to our HID or, or incandescents, um, they are measured through relative photometry. And in relative photometry, luminaires and the lamps used within them are tested separately. And we talked about that. We talked about the lamp's initial lumens, and that's what we compared when we were, when we were comparing vessels. Everybody made a lamp, it delivered light 360 degrees, so it was a matter of how efficient was your lamp, was what was the determining factor and the price of it when, when customers were going to buy that. So the total luminance flux and chromaticity or color of the fixtures lamps are typically measured with integrating spheres while luminous intensity distribution and efficiencies of the luminaires are usually measured with goniophotometers. When we talk about LED fixtures, again we're talking about uh, delivered light and the approved procedure and testing conditions for absolute photometry, which is what is used for LED, they're spelled out in the electric and photometric measurements of solid state lighting products and this is where you hear the term LM79 and in this case LM7908 because it was published in 2008. In absolute photometry only fixtures are measured, lumens are not. We don't separate the two. So um, 
fixture efficiency, which compares lamp lumens to fixture lumens, therefore has no meaning for an LED lighting fixture. When we talk about uh, relative photometry, absolute photometry, and efficiency, uh, specifiers, designers, and distributors need to compare the total lamp lumens of a conventional lighting fixture with the total fixture lumens of an LED fixture. To make a valid comparison, you must reduce the measured lamp lumens of a conventional fixture by its efficiency. This reduction is typically reported in zonal lumen summary chart. So we can see the efficiency of this particular product is 66.9%. Our total lumens was 860, so when we take 66.9% of that, we get 575 is the number of lumens uh, that is being delivered. So we have... Uh, we can see that 33.1% of the light is being wasted in this particular setting. So the best way, however, to have lighting layout is to show before and after foot candles on the surface. This way you can kind of compare what, you're, what you currently have to what you're going to get or what you want. Again, we want to remind you uh, we're revamping the uh, Max Light University. If you have someone that's just started with your company, it might be a good idea to hold off and let them start the course in January when we hope to have this up and running full speed. Uh, we, we have adjusted the first modular pretty significantly, but as I say, if, if you can't do that, then go through the glossaries and, and maybe let them get used to the terms. And as I say, then we'll get them up to speed as, as quickly as they can go through the, uh, the process. Again, we're revamping that and we'll be looking at some educational credit changes on that as well. Uh, I am available for any type of lunch and learns, breakfast and learns. Uh, we do online webinars. We can focus on specific Max Light products or services, or it can be a broad general type of uh, webinar for you. Simply shoot me an email, and we can start the discussion on how we can help you. Uh, we also want to shout out to Joe Pater's group. They're in Wisconsin. They work on our utility rebate services, so they're constantly in contact with utilities. I shoot Joe an email on many occasions, tell him I've got a project, this is the area, this product isn't available yet, is there anything he can do? He reaches back out to the utilities to see if he can't help get that product uh, specified for rebates. But he, he constantly is out there working on all that. He can help you with your rebate submission forms as well. So reach out to Joe, he's a nice resource to have available for you. And finally, I want to thank everybody for your attention. Uh, please feel free to use this opportunity to ask any questions you may have about Max Light or the topic discussed in this presentation. Thank you again, and we'll stay on for a few minutes for you.